this couldn't happen again. Welcome to the Stay at Home Reading Rush 2020. Hello lovely people, good afternoon. I actually got dressed today in like real clothes. I'm wearing pants, but they're not sweats. Or leggings. My sweats are typically my pajamas. My hair looks a little crazy, but as you saw last night, I started reading Lucy Foley's The Guest List. This is an early release with Book of the Month. I read about 58 pages into it before going to bed, and I'm really enjoying it. So this book, the wedding is taking place at a remote island in Ireland. It's a wedding for this up-and-coming, I think he's a reality show star, and his wife is created her own magazine, and she's sort of this fashion icon, I guess. Something goes wrong. It says everyone on the island has a secret, everyone has a motive, and someone won't leave this wedding alive. So it's like Clue, the game, but also I realized like Agatha Christie books. It's been a while since I read the thriller. I'm excited to be getting back into it because mystery crime thriller is my favorite genre. I can already tell that it's really interesting because I can't really tell who I should like. I like the plus one Hannah, but everyone else is sus and you can tell they have some secrets and it's getting really interesting and I'm only like 60 pages into it. This actually fits the prompt of book for place that I want to go. Not necessarily this remote island but I'm broadening it to Ireland and it fit perfectly because it is my April book of the month so I wanted to get to it. Let me go over my TBR with you. So I've got 10 books on my TBR for a four-day readathon. It's fine. I'm not gonna go over what the books are about unless I actually read them because I feel like that would be long. I honestly probably could have done a TBR video for this. The first prompt is read a book with a house on the cover. First book in the series of abortion events which is the bad beginning as you can see in the back and then I have the Dull People by Anna Martin and Laura Godwin and Pictures by Brian Salznick. Childhood favorite. Love this series. The next prompt is read a book in the same room the whole time. I have three books. I'm going to be reading in my room. Wild at Heart by K.A. Tucker. I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han, which is the third book in the Summer I Turned Pretty series. Next prompt is read a book set somewhere you wish you could go. This, which I'm already reading for Ireland. Whispers of War by Julia Kelly or Britain. This book was actually sent to me because I won it in a Goodreads giveaway but I like really need to get to it because it's sent to me in February. Last prompt is read a book that will make you smile and I have three books for that. So we'll always have summer by Jenny Han. Another childhood favorite is Molly Moon's Incredible Book of Hypnotism by Georgia Bing. B-Y-N-G Bing? Chandler Bing? I've been wanting to reread it for a while, but getting to rereads were hard since I started doing Goodreads goals. Not that that matters at all, but I just wanted to read as many new books as possible. And the last book is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I ordered the illustrated editions last year and I haven't gotten to them. And I read Harry Potter every year, reread it every year, but I only got to the first and second book last year. So I haven't decided if I want to reread those again. So I read the full series this year. So it could be Sorcerer's Stone instead of this. But either way, the Harry Potter illustrated editions are on my TBR. So those are the books I'm reading. It's a lot, but I'm excited. I took a mini break from reading to upload my five star predictions video, which is up already so i think it's here so please check it out if you haven't already also subscribe to my channel while you're here i am a bookish and lifestyle vlogger based in new york city yes the epicenter of the covid 19 and also follow me on my social media i am most active on instagram there's been a reveal i am on page 226 I'm definitely well over halfway through because I only have this much left. There's been two reveals of the secrets. They're good. I was slowly starting to catch on. The book is also told in two different timelines of before the wedding and then also after the event or seeming murder. I really can't put it down. I'm like actually enjoying reading it the entire way through without putting it down. Oh my god, I didn't think I would update until I was finished with the book. The reveals are happening. It's a lot and they're very good. Some of them are just so much more insane. Like literally my jaw is dropped so much bigger than i thought it is this book is amazing oh my god i figured it out i fucking figured it out i think we'll, we'll see oh my god oh my god i knew it
We're off to an amazing start for day one of the reading rush. Five fucking stars. Wow. Let's talk about it. Hair looks even more insane than before. Like I said, five stars. I'm so glad I picked this up. Two things this book has kind of reaffirmed in me. One, private schools are fucking crazy. And people who come out of them went through an ordeal definitely and they're fucking crazy. And the second thing is that you actually don't really know people. You never really know what's going on in their lives. What I thought was really good about this book as a thriller was that it was paced really, really well each reveal it wasn't right after the other it was kind of building up to each one but it was done very well it was written very well that it kind of gives you time to figure it out which i definitely did in the end like i figured out some of the secrets and definitely the big reveal at the end I didn't see some of it coming but i was able to figure them out soon in the end also and just Wow. That is all I have to say. I had dinner. My sister put on the Disney sing-along that was on ABC and we watched that for a bit. I have my soju and cider mix, my apple cider mix. And I want to get started on my next book, but I'm stuck between the Bad Beginning and the Doll People. I enlisted the help of my boyfriend, Coda, who conveniently just replied right now. And I think he's going to pick the Bad Beginning. I hope I can bang it out tonight. It's only 9 o'clock. That way I can read two books and it's sad. Yes! It's about three kids who have become orphans. They bounce back between distant relatives and then there's Count Olaf who wants to be their guardian just so he can steal their fortune. It's about like weird shit that happens in their tragic lives. I woke up today and I was supposed to have an interview but that got pushed back. In the meantime, I was on the phone with the bank to dispute a charge, like a fraudulent charge on my credit card. So they're sending me a new one. But also while I was on hold, I was able to get reading on my third book of the readathon and this is wild at heart this is the second book in the wild series the first one is a simple wild this book is about Kala and jonah actually came to see her in toronto he surprised her and he gives her a proposition that she cannot refuse and she's jet setting off to move to alaska and hopefully won't fall into the same doomed future that her mom and her father had so far i'm literally like 22 pages three chapters into it and i'm really loving it it's made me smile so much already this book also reminds me a lot of my own relationship because my boyfriend Code and I started out as long distance. We were long distance for almost about two years from the very beginning of our relationship and um, they did long distance for a bit as well. Joan and Kala, although they met on Alaska, like she was in Toronto and they just couldn't be apart from each other. So Kala talking about her feelings of wanting to be with Jonah so badly for like Christmas is reminding me a lot of the same feelings that I had with Coda. Like the longest we went not seeing each other was I think like eight months or something. So we definitely start to miss each other a lot. My whole sentiment of being able to relate to her feelings, Kala's feelings that way makes me like this book a lot more. And I'm only 22 pages into it. I finished The Bad Beginning last night and I gave it five stars just because I've read this book multiple times as a kid but this was my first reread as an adult and I definitely was very nostalgic reading it so I gave five stars for that reason but also just reading this as an adult. I think for YA it's really good or like middle grade because there's a lot of like the big adult vocabulary but Lemony Snicket breaks it down and tells you what it means and uses it multiple times to show you how it's being used so I, in that way I could see how it could be like educational and great for kids but also just reading this as an adult the story's like kind of fucked up. Count Olaf is such a messed up individual, but the adventures that the kids go on are really fun and how they all put their minds together to figure something out. It kind of made me want to do like a 24 hour readathon reading the entire series through because there's 13 books. Five star reads all around for this readathon so far. Doing really well. Three in a row. That'd be amazing. No pressure though. No pressure. Because I have read two books already for the readathon for day one, I read 313 pages for the guest list and then 163 pages for the bad beginning so that is a total of 476 pages for the first day that's looking pretty good i kind of wanted to push it to read a third book because i finished it at 10 p.m and read the doll people but i wanted to fit in other prompts <music> Hello? What time is it? It's 7 o'clock. I filmed a clip before, but it was incoherent, so I scrapped it. And I got dressed today. It's leggings again, but it's okay. I'm wearing my Jonas Brothers tour long sleeve shirt and this pink cardigan that was Coda's, but it looked awful on him, so I took it while she gave it to me. And I finished a book. I gave it five.
five stars. Really just needed to get into a readathon to get more good reads. Number one, after finishing Wild at Heart, I wanted to reread the duology again, The Simple Wild, because I just wanted to give it five stars again. I was on the fence already. And I was a little bit on the fence with this too, but I empathized with Kala so much. I was getting tingly sensations in my fingertips and my body was getting all warmed up when she was getting angry at Jonah because I was getting angry at Jonah and I could just feel for her a lot. And I knew that if I was going to empathize with her this much and I could almost cry when she did at her frustration in her relationship, then I could give this book five stars. Unlike a typical romance, this is the second book. So you know the couple already and they're already a couple. You don't have to wait for that anticipation. You're seeing real problems arise of a couple, how normal it is for there to be arguments in a relationship but also how difficult this must be for the both of them but honestly mostly Kala. Kala picked up her life from Toronto to move and live a completely new lifestyle in Alaska where she needs a car. She doesn't live in a city like she's in the middle of nowhere and Jonah did move to a different part of Alaska but you know he's doing what he loves and he's good at it. Kala has no one and she started a company with Jonah that requires her to be at home all the time and not really do anything where she can meet any people and spend time with people and get to know the town a little bit more. The chapters were separated by months so you could really see how long they were together and settling in and dealing with things in a new life. Something that does baffle me a little bit about this book and the story is that they haven't even known each other for a year and they took this really big leap into moving in together and living across the country to be with each other which I think just shows how much she wanted to or they wanted to be together. It all just sort of happened really quickly but they are really cute together and I'm sad that this is only a duology because I really enjoyed reading about them. But I think I'm going to be on to the next book and I'm going to read Molly Moon next. I'm watching Monk slash YouTube videos while I stretch but also I'm like 52% through with this. I actually wasn't going to get dressed today because, you know, it's the last day of the reading rush and it's realistic for me not to get dressed while in quarantine, but my mom was going to do the laundry and she, she told me to get changed, so I did. But I just finished Molly Moon and I gave it five stars. It's very nostalgic read for me. I feel like as a kid, I definitely would have enjoyed this more because she's living this glam life now that she has the power to hypnotize people, but she has learned her lesson in the end and I think it was good of her to learn that lesson and try to fix things. And I definitely want to finish. I think it's a trilogy. I feel like I cheated a little bit for the reading rush because all the books that I'm reading are childhood favorites except for Wild at Heart and so everything was going to be a five-star read. But because I had been listening to back-to-back -back audiobooks, I had lost my motivation to physically read and I think I really needed to get back into some childhood favorites to get back into physical reading. So it's still like 10 o'clock. Oh, it's 10.40 and I'm tired. I got like less than seven hours of sleep. I was was up until 5 a.m. on a zoom call with my friends and playing some games. After shower I think I want to read the doll people before I hit the hay and hopefully finish this. My total for yesterday was only 239 pages. I finished the last 133 pages of Wild at Art and 106 pages into Molly Moon. For three days my total is 1025 pages and also wanted to mention I don't know how I didn't notice this but I actually only had eight books on my TV heart. My dumb ass was counting the books multiple times for however many times they were counted for multiple prompts, if that makes any sense. I was counting them multiple times because I had them for multiple prompts. So I only have eight books. I don't know why I kept thinking a way of ten. And just like that, it's Tuesday. The reading rush has ended and I'm getting to filming the outro a little late. I read a total of four books and I gave them all five stars, which feels really good. Oh, I didn't read this. Where's the book I read? I'm missing a book. I read The Guest List, Bad Beginning, Wild at Heart, and Molly Moon's incredible book of hypnotism. I read two new books and two childhood favorites and I gave everything five stars. I am so happy with the way that this reading rush ended up with all five star reads. I'm very very happy. I didn't get into reading the doll people but this is going to be my next read. I ended up reading a total of 1,290 pages for the entire readathon. I definitely set myself up for higher expectations but it's okay because I still read a decent amount each day. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you participated in the reading 
Reading Rush yourself and how many books you read, which ones you enjoyed the most. If you didn't participate in the Reading Rush, that is okay. I believe there still should be another one over the summer, but I still want to know what you read over the weekend. Please give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!